I'm gonna dive in into the message on break free and I'm gonna talk about today um, a message titled fight back fight back growing up in a traditional Pentecostal um, Russian or Ukrainian family we were taught what the scripture teaches when they hit you one side give them the other one and which is a good teaching and it's important in America Christians are taught parents special they teach their children to to fight back uh, I met a young man this last week and he said uh, his father spanked him because they went to like a gas station or grocery store and the kid got hit by other kids and the father stood and watched and his son didn't fight back so he got spanked he got taught how to fight and I said well my family you know would teach us to take more instead of fight back and though the church taught us not to fight back like secretly I always wanted to fight back I just didn't have the capabilities to do that so but in my country where I come from if you don't have the power and you have the money you can buy the power and so that's why corruption is so high over there and so I remember one time I was my parents sent me to get some bread and milk in a local grocery and they don't I don't think they know this story is um, I got um, I got jumped by this group of thugs from my school and they beat me I mean all five of them mercilessly just from every side stomach head and they punched it, it, it was bad I still may, I might need to go to inner healing <laughs> and stuff so because I still I could see the picture in me and um, and so I wiped myself cleaned myself up I didn't want my parents to know and and everything I brought the bread and the milk and everything but next day in school you know I put my Christianity aside and uh, and so I went and I found thugs that were worse than them and I gave them 50 cents which is in that part of the world 50 cents at the time in school it's big money and um and so and I asked them I said you know I want you guys to you know make it make it loud make a statement and stuff so I want you to do it in front of me and stuff and so they so they brought those five thugs that that beat me and and right in front of me you know they they received a full measure pressed down shaken together and overflowing and stuff now that was before my Christ day so don't those of you who said like how dare you okay I was I was 12 years old but I knew if you can't fight back find somebody who can help you to fight back but you gotta fight back so now fighting back physically um, has its consequences and it's not what the scripture teaches us we're not called to be physically you know going and beating people up that is not the assignment of Jesus even though I know we have military people here some people who are marines and you're carrying always something with you under your belt and you know you're that if somebody gets beaten you're gonna jump in and you're gonna fight the bully and everything but the message of Jesus has never really been about violence because violence is not solved with violence Bible says that evil is overcome with good not with more evil but the scripture from the beginning it teaches us and it trains us to be spiritual violent men. Jesus even said since the, since the days of John until now he says the kingdom of God suffers violent and violent men take it by force. He says that people who are warriors, people who are fighters, people who are people who are not just taking the beating and, and 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 just healing up and just to get another beating. God wants to build within us a warrior spirit, a fighting mechanism, a fighting mindset. John Hagee once shared a story about two bulldogs, a small bulldog and a big bulldog. They were neighbors. And so a small bulldog would crawl under the fence to the big bulldog and pick a fight with the big, big bulldog. And of course he would get beaten really bad and so he would go back into his yard heal up you know lay under the sun get his wounds healed and next day he wouldn't learn the lesson he would go back under the fence and fight the big bulldog again the next day he got beaten even worse you know he took three more days to heal up and on the third day you guessed it he goes under the fence to pick a fight again except this third time he beats the big bulldog and the plot of the story or the point of the story is that it's never the size of the dog in the fight that determines the victory but it's the size of a fight in the dog see it's not the size of your problem that determines the victory or how easy it is to achieve it it's the size of your fight inside of you the size of victory that's inside of you can somebody say amen, amen. turn to your neighbor and say fight back 
So Ephesians chapter, I want us to go to F, uh, book of Esther chapter 8, book of Esther chapter 8 and verse 3. Now Esther spoke again to the king, fell down at his feet, imploring him with tears to counteract the evil that Haman the Agagite and the scheme which he had devised against the Jews. And we see that the king held up the serpent and everything and then in verse 11 or verse 5 it says if it pleases the king and I have found favor in his side that the thing seems right to the king I am and I am pleasing in his eyes let it be written to revoke the letter devised by Haman and etc and then it starts to describe the letters to be sent to give Jews a fighting chance now most of you who are familiar with the story I'm just gonna scan it to you is that Esther has an enemy in the palace called Haman our first message we talked about access denied access uh, Haman had an access to the palace even though he didn't live there he still had an access there we talked about how the enemy might not live in you but sometimes he still has an access through you by generational curses and other things and through Jesus we can cancel that access access amen and then we talked about the whole idea how that Esther she would go and she would spend time with the king she would press in and she would fight the spiritual world and then she would see in a natural world things would shift but I want you to see in here is that in chapter 7 it says that there was a time when Haman was hanged he suffered a punishment the king's anger was pacified it was calm and the enemy was dead See that's kind of what happens at the cross. At the cross God's anger was satisfied in Jesus and at the cross the enemy Satan was disarmed. His defeat was prophesied in Genesis chapter 3 when God said to the serpent he says the seed of a woman, watch this, woman doesn't have a seed. So God from the beginning was saying that this is going to be a birth that's going to be virgin birth. From the beginning God says in Genesis chapter 3 that Jesus is going to be born as a seed of a woman meaning there is going to be no man's seed it's going to be God there and this seed Jesus Christ will crush the head of the serpent. On the cross Jesus crushed the head of the serpent. On the cross he disarmed the devil. On the cross God's anger was satisfied. Amen. Praise be to God. The point being is the plot of Haman still remained after Haman was dead. Haman's plot and scheme was not cancelled when he was dead. Satan's defeat on the cross does not end evil in the world. Satan's defeat on the Calvary doesn't remove the sickness, it doesn't remove the demons and it doesn't remove the abuse and the hurt in the world. In fact all of that continues and I want you to see this. Esther comes back to the king and Esther begins to implore and cry with tears. The first time she was doing it was for the defeat of Haman. Now she prays for this that the king will empower the Jewish people to fight back. To give a written decree giving them permission to defend themselves. Mordecai is no longer just an official. Mordecai now is the second in command in the palace. With Esther and Mordecai and the king they write a decree letting Jewish people who have their enemy dead but the plot is still active giving these people who were victims yesterday to become warriors today and fight back against the plot still active. God the Father has a church on this earth called Esther whose assignment along with the Spirit of God equip the Christians who have Satan under their feet but the plot of the devil, the scheme of the devil, the weapon of the devil is still very active. For us not to simply say well devil has been defeated and confess something that is not real in our life. But to fight back against every scheme, every plot and every weapon. Whether it comes in our sickness, 
whether it comes in our financial setback whether it comes in our marital discourse whether it comes in our mental attack whether it comes in our family unit whatever unit that plot comes today you and I have a decree from heaven the church's assignment and the assignment of the Holy Spirit is not to make Christians into wimps but to make us into warriors who stand on our victory in Jesus but this victory doesn't end the evil it empowers me to fight the scheme come on somebody I'm getting there I know some of you are like so I want you to open your notebook and I want us to write, we're going to give you five practical tips on how to fight back. I genuinely believe if you open up your heart, this might be one of the most important messages you will hear on Deliverance today. Number one, whatever is not removed, you are empowered to resist. Whatever God has not removed yet, that area God empowers you right now to overcome that area. Maybe instead of just praying God remove this area, take this thing away, perhaps you need to step in into the fact that this area might not be removed. It needs to be revoked, revolted, resisted and stood against and the decree has been released. The king is on your side. The church has been assigned to help you with this and the Holy Spirit has been sent to aid you with this. That whatever is left in your life, you have been empowered by heaven to resist. So stop just asking God, why is this still happening? Why are you allowing this to continue in my life? Because heaven is asking you, why are you allowing this to continue in your life? I have empowered you, God says. The decree has been sent out. Can somebody say amen? Every scheme, every work of the devil, every weapon planned and fashioned by demons and Satan, whatever is still not broken up in my life, I they receive this as a confirmation. That thing that's still lingering, I already have been empowered to crush it by myself with the power of the church, the Holy God, the Holy Scriptures and the Holy Spirit. Come on somebody. In Judges it says the following, when Israel went to promised land and they conquered it and it says in Judges chapter 2 verse 22 and verse 23, it says the reason why God left nations in the promised land and he didn't drive them out for two reasons. The first one it says is to test Israel whether they will obey God or not. And the second one is to teach them to fight. I believe sometimes the Lord allows certain things to linger in our life to see. When you have a headache, are you going to lose your Christianity? That when you have still this temptation, are you going to lose who you are in Jesus? And the second so God can teach you to fight because the the ancestors knew how to fight the promised land but the children that grew up things were handed over to them and God says I want each generation to know how to fight my great-grandparents and my parents knew how to how to pay a price for their Christianity because they couldn't meet freely today I don't have to pay that price but I have to pay a price in other ways God will cause every generation to learn how to fight and sometimes God will allow a demon to come around your life to teach you how to pray to teach you how to stand on the promises of God to teach you how to fast to teach you how to intercede to teach you how to get your knees on the floor and your face on the floor and seek the face of God God says I want to teach you to fight but to teach you to fight, I gotta leave some things hanging. There are schemes, there are plans, there are weapons that are still active in the world today that God is not going to remove. In, in fact, He will release a decree to empower us to resist. Have you been asking God to remove something He assigned you to resist? Have you been praying for God to remove something that God's been empowering you to overcome. Not everything is up to God. The church has been assigned 
to equip Christians not to be dependent on the pastor and on the prayer of somebody at the altar. The church has been assigned to equip each one of us. People who come up and say I don't get fed in the church. The only human beings in your house that say I don't get fed in this house are little children. The rest of you, this is what your mom and daddy will tell you. You know where the fridge is. If you leave this church and you say I don't get fed, you're a baby. You know where the fridge is. I don't come to this church to be fed. I come to this church to serve. Now I get fed from this church. I get ministered to from the worship. I get ministered to but that's not my primary reason. I'm a mature believer in Jesus and so and if something doesn't feed me that comes out of the stage I know where the fridge is. I know when the morning prayer starts and I know my Bible reading and I have a Hungry Gen YouTube channel which has 2,000 video clips. That's 2,000 courses of meal. That's enough for the rest of your life and if that's not enough there's a podcast that has like 600 audio tracks. The point being is the assignment of Esther was to empower the Jews to fight. The assignment of our church is not to create baby Christians, it's to create warriors who will fight. Somebody say fight back. Come on I can't hear you, say fight back. Others of us, you just need to grow up. Because being on a, what's the baby food called? Uh, on a form, being on a formula for 20 years is not healthy. And always complaining and switching churches like people switch clothes and I'm just not being fed. I'm just not being fed. You know what? I think sometimes we need to be fed up with that and simply say, say you know what? I need to go and no, don't be like the older son who says, oh nobody gives me anything. And the father says, all that I have is yours. You just take it. You know where the fridge is. It's stocked up. Go grab whatever you want and stop complaining. Okay, I was not planning to say this. So if this was for somebody and if that offended you, I'm not sorry. <laughs> Number two. I want you to write, write down number two. Resilient mind is like an immune system that resists invaders. The Jewish people were empowered to fight instead of asking the king to remove the plot. But I want us to go a little bit deeper right now. Resilient mind fights invaders or microorganisms on its own. Your body in the physical realm, the kind of similar immune system in your body. It's kind of like your mind in the spiritual realm. Immune system, and I'm not a doctor and so I'm not an expert in, in medicine, but from what we know generally, immune system is, is, is this thing in your body that is designed by God to fight back bacteria, and all kinds of attacks on your body. There's attack on your body every single day. When you walk into a room, so there's about 200 people in this room. There's quite a few people that are sick. I'm not giving this prophetically. It's just, it's cold and some people, some people are sick. It's evident. Some of you, you just, you're fighting a flu. So that means you're coming in conf conflict with the flu constantly. It's in this atmosphere. Now the people who will get sick from this service, now typically we come to get healed. But if you come in a gathering and shake too many hands, you can get sick for one reason. Not because there is a sickness in the room. It's because the immune system you have is weak. And you come in contact with, with sick people and you get sick easier and faster. Not because their sickness is too great. It's the immune system is too low. So therefore they teach us to constantly boost your immune system. They say things like washing your hands help your, helps your immune system. Eating vegetables and fruits helps your immune system. Not smoking and not drinking helps your immune system. Getting enough rest and exercising helps your immune system. E eating vitamins helps your immune system. So you got to do things to boost your immune system. That doesn't mean after that you should go and touch purposely every sick person. But you can live without fear knowing that sickness around you really doesn't stand chance. And you don't have to go like this. I remove the sickness. I fight the sickness. I, no, no, you don't have to do that. Immune system does that automatically. You sit there and it fights by itself. Reverend Dr. Bob Larson, I asked him about this thing about demonology and all of these things and he's probably world's leading expert on this topic. He told me one thing that was really interesting. He said, Vlad, two people 
can be involved in the same sin or incident and one person can get a demon from it and the other person can walk out and not getting a devil from it and I told him I said that's kind of not fair where you know two people can commit one sin and one gets a demon and the other doesn't and he said the spiritual world heavily is limited and responds to your mental state he says even non-christians non-followers of Jesus who grew up in healthy families whose self-esteem was built from childhood who have healthy emotional beings he says they'll touch that sin and the devil cannot get in there because devil respects the wall of somebody's will and the other person can claim Christianity and Jesus Christ but because their inner world is broken their mind is twisted it's not resilient it's broken the devils easily come inside the same way with sickness you know that the bacteria doesn't care your religious preferences it doesn't say oh you're Christian okay I'm flu not touch gonna touch you it only respects one thing your immune system spiritual world I'm gonna offend some people it doesn't care of what your religious background is what is the state of your mind right now I'll give you an example from the Bible Jesus is the Son of God heals the sick casts out devils unlimited grace the Bible says unlimited spirit in him he walks into Nazareth and people's mind is limited the mind of people says he's not God so Jesus the Bible says in Mark he cannot not will not he can't his his power is jammed in Nazareth because people made up their mind he is not God if your mind can limit Almighty God how much your mind can limit defeated devil how much more your mind can limit nightmares how much more your mind can limit suicidal tendencies how much more you can make up your mind and say whatever I feel whatever I go through I know who I am I'm not what I look in the mirror I'm not the I'm not the abuse that I went through I'm not what I'm feeling I am what God says I am and you just jam your mind toward the promises of God your resilient mind can resist the devil power some of us we blame the devil for being too strong the reality is our mind is too weak the devil's always been the same if people can jam the power of God we can jam the power of the devil and he actually doesn't have much of it left most of us give him more than he has I want to encourage you right now build your immune system build your mind build a resilient mind Put some vitamins in your system like scriptures get a bible reading plan pick up some positive faith building christian books don't listen to those things that are that constantly bring you down stop watching the mexican soap opera or american soap opera or russian soap opera there is enough drama already in your life you don't need to watch more on tv get some positive things get some things get some healthy things when you wake up in the morning take 30 minutes to have your body wake up drink some water listen to some worship don't just jump into watching how everybody's posting fake part of them on Instagram listen build your immune system and when demons will attack the de your immune system will fight back your spirit will fight back as you sit it will fight back as you worship it will fight back as you praise it will fight back as you sleep it will fight back come on somebody shall fight back somebody shall fight back now you may take your seats the Bible says that we wear the armor of God I learned this the when we were in the beginning as our church was moving in deliverance one of the things that we had was a mental I believe it was a stronghold that anytime we do deliverance we have to pray for protection and I understand where it's coming from ministry of deliverance is very serious casting out of devils is very serious and uh, so I would remember we would start praying for it conference is coming I think was a revival with Wiseman Harry so we're like taking a whole week to pray and fast God we know people are coming and we we said these things attacks are coming I know the devil's gonna try to attack retaliate because he knows all the things we're gonna do 
and so and we almost like told the devil gave him what to do for us because we started to pray in prayer we told him exactly what he he can do uh, car accidents sicknesses and all of these things and the crazy part is right before that conference all the things we prayed against happened car accidents sicknesses some people end up in a hospital the car was flipped that was carrying a crane to the to the conference and then I heard this pastor who had a similar situation he was casting out of demons and everything was fine the whole team was fine people were being free and everything and then he read a book that said if you do this kind of a ministry the devil will attack you back you, you don't dare to step on the devil's territory without repercussions so he told his team guys we've been doing it all wrong we need to start praying for protection we need to start being very careful because the devil will fight back and the more they started to pray for protection the more calamity started to happen until in two years that ministry of deliverance got completely shut down because of so many attacks on the team no more deliverance nothing was happening and then God convicted him he says who told you to believe a tradition he says you were not ignorant when you were doing ministry first and you had no attacks you had an immune system that was built on the promise of God I give you authority and nothing will by no means hurt you back he says you simply believe that you didn't even confess it you didn't pray for it you just believe that in your mind it fought things back the devil was always attacking it's just your resilient mind fights things back like an immune system there are demons all over tri-cities all the time seeking to cause problems and pain but when you state your mind in who you are in Jesus some things will be just fought back automatically and this pastor a minister from the Ukraine after that he gathered his team again and he, he apologized to them and he said we did not believe what God said he said we all dropped our shield every time we started to pray for protection he says now we're gonna pick up the Word of God we're gonna once and for all settle a fact doing deliverance is safe he said none of us believe that when you pray for the sick that person leave, loses a sickness and you get it none of us believe that when you lead somebody to the Lord and they repent of murder after that you become a murderer salvation is bigger than deliverance he says none of us believe in that we believe that it's safe to lead people to Jesus we believe it's safe to pray for the sick yet when it comes to deliverance we get spooked out and that opens the door for the devil because we drop our shield we lose our immune system and when I received that revelation ever since then when we have big conferences when we have raised to deliver us and God does everything you know one thing about our team we pray for the conference we pray for people who are coming and we thank God Geico saves me 15% or more God 100% all the time come on somebody somebody shall fight back somebody say my mind when it's renewed it will fight back so instead of trying to glorify the devil build your immune system strengthen your mind and you can do that by the word of God you can do that by attending the church you can do that by joining a home group you can do that by getting some good people not toxic people but good people in your life who build you not tear you down can somebody say amen come on let's put our hands together for Jesus I want you to write down point number three focus more on being filled instead of being free um, and this point comes straight from my home group last week we were going around in our home group and asking a question I forgot what the question was I just remember everybody's answers now <laughs> well one of them was my brother uh, some of you know the story of my brother how he was fighting uh, and he was addicted to drugs and, and a lot of other things and how the Lord touched his life and my brother Andre he said I asked him like I know that you struggled with some of these things if the, even after you came to Christ you still kept falling into the same thing and I said what changed in you what was the change and he said something that was really profound he says Vlad in one of the messages I heard in our church to stop asking God for freedom after you've done so many times and to stop seeking freedom and just start focusing on one thing to live a filled life and that's what he said he says I start making a priority not to I'm not gonna drink I make a priority I will go to prayer I removed my focus from oh I don't want to smoke too you know what I'm gonna be consistent with my Bible reading I might not be able to beat the craving but I can channel my energy and my focus to staying filled and he says it took some time but after that he says I've noticed that the things that held a grip on me they lost their grip on me 
Now I am not ad advocating that you go getting drunk as long as you read the Bible. I'm not advocating that you keep subscription to Playboy magazine as long as you pray. I'm not advocating indulging in the flesh but I'm saying there are certain things sometimes you fight, you fight, you fight, you fight, you fall, you fall, you fall, you fall. Stop and redirect yourself to focus on being filled. The Bible says walk in the Holy Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. The Bible does not say fight the flesh and you will overcome. It says walk in the Spirit and you might have to drop this and that as you walk in the Spirit because it hinders your walk but the focus is not freedom, the focus is being filled. Come on somebody. Touch your neighbor and say be filled. Say focus on being filled. That's where the real freedom comes. Are you with me? My uh, late uncle who passed away now is with the Lord. When he was younger he did not like to fish like normal people where you go and throw the line and catch one fish at a time. He wanted all the fish to come out all at once and there are particular devices you can make that helps the fish to recognize that the time is up. And so this device that he was making in his house um, chemistry probably wasn't his best um, topic because the device exploded and so it exploded in the house the glass went all around the house and the glasses went into his body into his skin some of it went into his fingers some of you who uh, who been coming to our church for some time you remember him he, he's the one that had less fingers uh, half of them were were cut off because of that glass that would remove his fingers some of it went into his eyes and then Stefan, uh, he tried to remove some, whatever he could, but then he just continued to live his life. He had a family, a children, now grandchildren. And one thing I remember in one of our conversations that he mentioned, he's like, up to that day, he said certain glasses would still come out. He says, I don't dig for them. I don't look for them, but because I grow, I get stronger, I get bigger, I get healthier. Glasses continue to come out. I genuinely believe that's how Christian life is as you grow there are things that will still continue to come out bible says perfect love casts out fear the word cast out is the same word where jesus cast out a demon perfect love means mature as you mature in god's love as you mature in god's promises stuff will just be cast out there are stuff you have you don't even know you have and if you keep digging everything in yourself and comparing it to Jesus right now, it will be so hopeless that you might not even want to live because you're so messed up. But if you stop focusing on you and start focusing on being filled and growing in Jesus, there will be layers of things you don't even know you have will be removed by the power of the Holy Spirit and the process of your growth. It's coming out. Can somebody say amen? Touch your neighbor, say keep growing. That your other neighbor say no matter what keep growing. Number four, glance at the past, gaze at the future. What will help us to fight back is training our mind as we mentioned to understand that what God hasn't removed I gotta fight, fight for it. Secondly what trains my mind is to know that my mind will fight automatically if I build an immune system. Number three what we mentioned is when I focus on being filled instead of focus on being free I actually will get more freedom instead of obsessing with freedom. And then number four I have to train my mind to look forward to the future instead of obsessed with the past. Every one of you here today understands that principle. We understand that in driving. We rarely understand that with soul or with deliverance. Ministry of deliverance or ministry of inner healing a lot of times can place excessive emphasis on someone's past. Where people start digging into their past looking for connection between some kind of an open door and their present calamity. It helps people to have something to blame. It helps us to have something to hold responsible. And we start going into our past and looking for things. Now it is true the Holy Spirit can use that to bring something from our past to bring healing and deliverance. I have a whole book, a whole chapter in my book called Open Doors. Open doors have been a key that the Holy Spirit used to bring freedom in my life. But let me tell you something, I was not looking for open doors. I was looking for God. 
and God revealed the open doors and helped me to close them when you go into your backyard of your life and you become the spiritual archaeologist and you start looking for dead things I'm gonna tell you one thing right now whatever you seek you find and you will find a bottomless pit of problems of which there will be no end and your life is going on and you're there looking oh maybe this if I don't confess this my problem wouldn't be healed oh maybe maybe my great 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 uncle he crossed a black cat on Friday and that's why the curse came oh I repent for every black cat and you're living in this cycle looking for open doors let me tell you this Bible never tells us to look for open doors it tells us to look for the face of Jesus when you find his face you find closing to every door the only time you have to look back is to glorify Jesus the only time you look back is to find faith for your present problem and unless Holy Spirit guides you but Holy Spirit he doesn't live in the past so his guiding in the past is always quick and back we have a generation today like Lot's wife they walk forward but they look backwards they don't become free they become frozen the first frozen movie was Lot's wife she got frozen <laughs> and the reason why she got frozen is because she was trying to go forward and looking backwards and some of you watch that movie so much and if you keep keep looking back you're gonna become frozen too God doesn't create you and but the devil tells us if you look, keep looking back you're gonna find freedom you're gonna find freezing you're gonna freeze you're not gonna be able to move forward America's 20th president in 1981 was shot now it was during those times where secret service wasn't available for the president so they kind of walked around like normal people and this guy took a train and in the train station somebody came up and pow pow and shot him twice the doctors at the time they did not use clean instruments and they didn't even use gloves and the, 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 the cleanness part of of the medical care it wasn't present there and so they quickly stitched him up he recovered until some brilliant doctors decided to look for the bullet so they opened him up again to look for the bullet now they couldn't find the bullet with their dirty hands uncleaned instruments they went probing around and they got that area infected some guy invented a metal detecting machine so decided to put a machine on the president to look for the bullet the only thing he forgot is the bed the president was laying on was full of metal so the machine jammed and showed him the wrong place where the bullet was the doctor went to the other place in his body looking for the bullet they got the other area infected as well but they never found the bullet and the doc and the president died and the news article said this the shooter actually they quoted the words of the shooter the shooter said this I shot the president doctors killed him I wonder how many times the devil is the one that shot us but probing around our past is what infects us you know in your car <clears throat> and I understand we have counselors here therapists we have inner healing ministry and we believe in in healing but constant journeys to the past for those of you who are obsessed with taking journeys to the past can I ask you to drive like that home today we'll see how far you get absolutely nowhere there will be one of the hospitals you will be there the reason why the front windshield is bigger than your rear view mirror in your car is because it's been designed like this to tell you where you're headed is more important than where you're coming from I do not want to downplay abuse I don't want to play downplay abandonment I don't want to downplay a fatherlessness I don't want to downplay the fact that one of your parents took their life I don't want to downplay the fact that you were raped I don't want to downplay the fact that you had a divorce but I can tell you get a bigger front windshield have a bigger dream than you have of your memory have a bigger vision than you have of your past listen enlarge your future because God is in your future he's not parked somewhere in your past waiting to get unhinged gaze at your future and only glance at your past can somebody say amen where you had it is bigger where you had it is better and where you had it is brighter than where you're coming from
maybe you've had this and this and this happen maybe the society has labeled and uh, labeled things on you maybe your family has labeled things on you but listen you decide what really sticks to you you can remove that label and say listen I am not divorced I am not abused I am not this and this and that I am who God says I am and he happens to think that I am his child he happens to think that I am righteous he happens to think that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made he happens to think that I am worth to die for he happens to think that I am a royal priesthood he happens to think that I am his special child somebody give God praise right now come on you can do better than that somebody give God praise right now if you believe you have a future bigger than your past give God some praise right now Your dreams have to be bigger than your memories. Come on, that's tweetable right there. That's why first two minutes of every message in our church, you hear about our dream. You may say, that's too big. You don't blame the car maker in your car for making, making the front windshield big. And you're glad it's big so you can see where you're going. I want to tell you where we're going. We don't want to have a big rearview mirror. We want to have a big front windshield have the same thing for your life you cannot fight back if you're looking back to fight back you got to look forward amen and lastly deliverance is a means to a goal dominion is that goal in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 the Bible says that God created us for dominion he did not create us for freedom we were created free to rule we were not created to be free we were created free to rule God in heaven doesn't sit being imprisoned by the devil's opinion or what Democrats or Republicans are thinking of God God in heaven doesn't sit struggling with loneliness of how many people don't want to accept him God in heaven is not sitting insecure by scrolling through everybody's Instagram God in heaven is not looking for freedom he is free but he has authority and he made you and me in his image and likeness never in his design he wanted deliverance deliverance came as an exception because we lost our dominion and he says now I need to give them deliverance to get them back to their dominion but the goal was never deliverance when you focus on deliverance you will always be a slave because slaves need deliverance dominion always belongs to sons and soldiers when you focus when you raise the bar higher and say my goal is not for God to miraculously get me out of Egypt my goal is for God with me to get me to possess what belongs to me while I am developing a spirit of a son a spirit of a soldier together with the Holy Spirit and I take what belongs to me as a child of God that is the goal there was this basketball game two people were playing and one guy was always scoring you know and always doing the, the dunks but he was very short and the other guy comes to him and he says wait he says you lowered the basketball hoop to your height he says that's not how this game is played he says no but I can reach it and a lot of people this is what they do is they they lower God's standards to what they're comfortable with instead of raising themselves to what God is set for us God did not lower it to deliverance. God has from the beginning set it up for dominion. Jesus confirmed it by saying I give you authority not freedom but authority to trample and Paul confirms it by saying through the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace you're called to reign not survive not get through not just barely get by but reign in life. That is God's size. That means we have to grow to it. I might not be there right now but I know the goal. And that is not deliverance it's dominion some of you you already got deliverance you were a slave God gave you deliverance now he pulled you out but you're standing in the front of the promised land and you're saying God the promised land doesn't need 10 plagues it needs 20 let's begin Lord and God says there's no plagues coming that is you and me when you go I go no God if you don't strike the Philistines and all other in the Philistines I can't go and God says if you don't go I don't go because now you can't think like a slave you got to act like a son you got to fight like a soldier in the promised land in the Egypt God gave them wealth in the promised land God gave power to get wealth God didn't give them anything 
God only gave them power and he says whatever you want you go get it I want to tell you something dominion is ours as a church we don't want to teach people to get deliverance we want to get people through deliverance into dominion into victory into thinking better living better and having a bad attitude somebody say amen